So hi, Gene. We hey, are how's here it going? At uh, Entropy and Sons. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Gene. I'm the founder of Entropy and Sons. Uh, we're here at NAM 2024, showing off our video synth. Uh, I've made a couple of videos with you guys in the past, uh, but we're now actually, for real, getting really close to release. Um, our, we were planning on originally releasing last summer, but we ran into some delays, which we kind of uh, pivoted into a beta test. So we've been running like a community beta test for the past six, seven months, and uh, basically just updating our device with response to feedback. And now we're at the point where we're basically just like fixing the last bugs, and I still have to write a manual. And then we hopefully are going to be releasing in the next like two months. So things are getting really close, and I'm happy to show you guys uh, where we're at right now and what we've been doing. Perfect. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, uh, we are a maker and designer of this video synth right here. Uh, it's, it's a new product, and we're pretty happy with how it's turning out and uh, what it can do. Um, honestly, even calling it a video synth is sort of like a misnomer at this point, just because the scope and scale of what it's capable of is really uh, kind of outclassing like most other video synths on the market, uh, of which there are only actually a couple. Uh, so, uh, first of all, it just makes like really kind of, in my opinion, awesome like HD uh, visuals uh, in response to like a wide variety of inputs. It responds to music. Uh, you can feed camera input into it. Uh, if you have other VJ clips and other uh, video sources, you can stream that stuff into it too. It can respond to modular gear. It has uh, eight uh, zero to ten volt CB jacks on the back. It can respond to MIDI. Um, you can reconfigure everything. It's, it's a really powerful and very dynamic instrument. Uh, but honestly, like the major selling point is it's, it's both the interoperability, uh, the usability. It, it comes with like a lot of really awesome, uh, very accessible presets out of the box. And honestly, just like the video content is probably the coolest thing about it. It just makes some really, like, in my opinion, awesome uh, kind of stuff. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a video system, but it's not really based on uh, video clips and video loops like a lot of software alternatives are. Um, it's a generative system. So it's, a, it's highly parameterized, and it's generating all of the content dynamically and algorithmically, uh, which gives you a lot more uh, ability to control the various parameters and various aspects of it, because there's just a lot more stuff that goes into it. So, Right now, this, this one instrument that's running is a video feedback simulation, and it exposes about 100 parameters. All of them can be mapped to MIDI. All of them can be mapped to audio signals. Uh, you can map like the low frequency channel or the low frequency band of like an audio signal to various parameters. There's all kinds of things you could do. Uh, the, the possibilities are really kind of enormous. Uh, so, so you've got uh, you, what have you got running on this one at the moment? So right now it's a uh, it's hooked up to a modular rig, which I could turn on in a second. I've got like a little video loop player over there, and just a basic MIDI controller. The MIDI controller is something you might want to have at like a show or something like that, just to kind of act as like a breakout board. Um, so this right now is basically set up to a bunch of lighting controls. This is like a global global lighting fade that you can like turn it on on and off during a uh, downtime when a track's playing. There's like these are actual color controls, so you can try to use this to like synchronize with uh, lights in a venue or something like that. Let me try to hook up the uh, CV input right here. I think I just need to activate. Let's just try to activate the theremin and see if that's working. So yeah, this is actually hooked up to like the color phase. Uh, so it actually kind of, yeah, it's a little bit of a trick and just something neat that people like to play with. I can turn on this little joystick right here, and now it's actually letting me kind of drive the system with like an XY controller. And I've got a bunch of oscillators here hooked up that you can wire into various channels. And uh, everything that's going into the system can be controlled by everything. You can map CV signals to turn on and off LFOs based on gates. Uh, you can make CV clock pulses and sync up your LFOs with that. Uh, and you can just like numerically map uh, CV inputs to parameters. Same thing with MIDI, um, and same thing with a lot of the audio input, too. So a couple of the major things that we've done in response to community feedback is that we've basically, the, the biggest thing is that we've uh, done a big number on the UI. Uh, so there are now like multiple UIs. The first one people will probably go into is this play mode, which basically just exposes a big bank of presets, uh, lets you randomize things, lets you control the screensaver. You can go into the... Uh, the library manager and tag presets that you like that you can maybe recall later during a show or something like that. But all you have to do is like tap on something and it'll load a new preset. And this one, this one's cool. It's got camera input built into it. We also have like an auto mapping feature. So if you have like I/O plugged in and you don't want to manually go in there and wire it to activate signals, it'll just automatically like do something cool with you or with it. 
this should actually make it start responding to the audio signal, although it may or may not be visible. Yeah, it's probably a little hard with the noise to actually get a sense of what it's doing, but all these radial pulses right there are generated by the audio input. Let's see. So the second UI that we've added is a little performance widget. Uh, it's, it's definitely designed with like live performance in mind for somebody that's actually running lights at a show, at a, at a club, or for uh, somebody to actually run while they're playing another instrument or something like that. So it's got a little preview of the screen um, in case you actually can't see the screen. It's got, and it has like lighting controls and like audio responsiveness controls by default. Some of the touchscreen stuff is also deactivated too, so, because we don't want people accidentally touching stuff when the lights dim. So you have to actually kind of more manually go in and uh, modify settings. Which? Oh, there we go. So uh, is so. As you've obviously had a little bit of uh, kind of, I won't say problems, but you, you, you kind of were hoping to get it out last year, and yeah. now, so where where are we in time in terms of the cycle? So we're actually really close to done. Uh, the thing is in a feature complete state, so everything is implemented, everything is working. Um, the only things that are unresolved, there's still some bugs. Uh, we're not going to release this thing until we are confident it will like never crash in like a professional setting. Uh, and there's still just a, a few uh, minor glitches in places that we need to get straightened out. Uh, but most of all, the thing is genuinely really stable and really functional at the moment. And uh, I've been putting off writing the manual for quite some time. And it's actually gotten to the degree uh, where it's probably going to take me about a month to write the manual because it is that advanced at this point. Um, so that's kind of where we are. It's basically just documentation and tying up loose ends. Uh, so the actual release plan, um, first of all, we have them all almost fully manufactured in my basement. We're just waiting for me to finish the last uh, bits. Uh, but we are fully intending on releasing around April, March this year. Uh, and that's uh, a little bit more of a delay that I've been telling some of our pre-orders. So if you have pre-ordered and you're watching this, I'm going to be sending you an email in the next like week or so inviting you to our beta test. So we're going to be expanding that and opening it up a little bit more. So anybody that's ordered over the past couple months and wants to get it sooner than that, we'll send it to you in the next week or two. So uh, that's going to be something we're going to be offering to people soon. Um, yeah, so that's basically where we are. Uh, we're really happy with how everything's turned out. The feedback has been phenomenal. The feedback at NAM is phenomenal as always. Um, we're really pleased with what we're making. We're, we really think we're, uh, we, we think we've identified a market that doesn't exist. Um, something more significant and involved than like an LED flashing beat bar is normally kind of hard to come across. Normally there's like a huge leap from like the most basic music responsive thing to anything that's like even closing or getting close to professional quality. Uh, so we think we found something that's like easy to use out of the box, but still really customizable. And we think there's genuinely like a market for it. And uh, the response we're getting from the community and everybody uh, it seems to play out that theory, so. Brilliant. So um, are you kind of close to a final price then as well? Uh, yeah, so the uh, the price is going to be $1,200. Uh, I don't think we're going to increase the price when it, when we actually come out of pre-order. I think we're pretty set on that. Although there is a NAM discount code that people are probably interested in. It's NAM 2024 and it expires uh, midnight February 1st. So. Perfect. Well, Gene, thank you very much for yeah, speaking to pleasure. us. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot.